Hi, precious friends. I pray blessing over you. I want to encourage every single First Nations precious family out there, young person, leader, pastor, I want you to know today that you matter. And every single child, but every single family, every single minister matters to God in this time and this hour. And as we reflect back on what's happened with the scenario of the residential school anguish that many of you have felt and are feeling even today of the pain from the residential school, the 60 scoop era, and what has taken place um, with our young children of the unmarked graves. I want you to know that we stand with you. We encourage you. Um, we are here to love on you and you are not alone. You know, three words I want you to remember, and that is this, you are valuable, you are precious, and you are loved. No matter what systems have done, no matter what people may say, know that Shamando, our God, loves you so much, and he sees you as valuable. You see, there's a, a story about a grandpa and his little grandchildren, and they were sitting down coloring. And the little girl was coloring away and she broke her crayon. And she thought she couldn't paint a picture because she had broken the crayon. And she went, Grandpa, my crayon broke. And the grandpa said, come bring that crayon to me, sweetie. So she brought the crayon and the paper to her grandpa. And the grandpa drew a beautiful, a beautiful happy face on the page and he looked at the granddaughter and he smiled at her and said you see God can still paint a beautiful picture with broken crayons you see a lot of times you might be out there and you might be feeling broken from what's happened in your past I can so empathize with you I just wrote a book called healing from pain to purpose and I would love to make that available to you and I also uh, wrote the healing journal uh, that you will find extremely helpful. It'll be an action plan that'll help you soar from your pain to your purpose. So I want to encourage you go on Amazon and you can actually download um, you can download the Kindle or you can buy the paperback um, healing from pain to purpose um, the book itself as well as the healing journal. This journal will take you on a transformational journey in which you will grow in your freedom. And I just want to encourage you, when I wrote it, I was receiving my freedom, even writing it. So I want to encourage you, and I pray that God will minister to your heart and help you heal and soar higher, because that's the heart of God. And many of us and out there, many of you out there might feel that you are, you can't paint a picture because you have been broken. Well, let me encourage you that God is the molder. He is the mender of broken hearts. God says that he is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And God is your best friend. You see, what happened in history's past is tragic. And what took place to our people, and I can empathize with many, because I was in the foster care system. I was in six foster homes, and I was taken out of my mother's home, handcuffed by a police officer who did not understand the beauty of of God's hand on children, and he didn't understand child separation from parents. And so I know what that's like. It's painful, it hurts. And you know what? I do know this as a walk in testimony that God wants to restore your life. You see, many have tried to put you down and discourage you and make you think that you don't have any purpose because they have relationally hurt you. But I wanna encourage you. You can take that pain and you can soar in your purpose and touch many lives that'll help change um, really the nation. And I believe some of you might be watching this and I believe God is able to even raise you up to even be the next prime minister, to even be a great entrepreneur, to do great things in this time and this hour. And um, you are not designed to live in your old past, but you are 
designed to live in your destiny now and the future of what God has for you. And I just want to share with you, God says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, he will fulfill the desires of your heart. You call upon him, he will answer you and he will show you great and mighty, mighty things. And uh, we're not calling on anyone else, not government, not other people, but we're calling on God. And when we call on God, our shaman do, our one who paid the price on Calvary, he died on the cross for us. You know, um, we'll have everything we possibly need. He will be your best friend every single step of the way and whatever you do. You see, we have been systematically molded in the system and someone comes along and says, this is how you're to live, people. This is the way we live. Did you know, precious ones, that an elephant, an elephant as big as it is, can be chained to a fence and not go any further because it is, it is feeling limited. It's stuck. Even though the elephant has the power, it has the strength to get away from that chain, but yet it stays stuck in that position. Some of you out there, not only Indigenous people, but non-Indigenous people struggle with this. And this is one of the reasons why many get jealous of people who are just stepping out in faith. This is why many get insecure and they start to compete against each other. And this is why many people even get greedy and get so pumped up with their bigness that they try to keep everybody else feeling small. But that's not the heart of God. God says, call upon me and I will show you great and mighty things. Psalm 77, 14, one of my favorite scriptures, he says that God will perform miracles. He will display power among his people. And so what I want to share is that you can make a difference and your life matters. The call on, on your life matters. And it's beyond just what we do. You see, there are things that we do that are valuable. That's a topical level. One of the things I learned, even from um, Family Foundations of Greg Hill, and he shares um, about the difference between topical communication and relational. And what's hurt a lot of our Indigenous people is the relational component. The topical component is the tasks, the things we do, the things that we participate in. And of course, granted, you know, our language and all that stuff is part of who, who we are. I, I understand that. But really who we are is, is really who the beautiful creator has created us to be. And he created us in his image. He created us in his likeness to walk in love, gentleness, kindness, to walk in purity, to walk in that, uh, that, that presence of himself. And um, many have not been able to come to know that beautiful presence because the iron fist of religion has harmed so many people. But I wanna encourage you precious ones that God still wants you to have a relationship with Jesus and lay everything down before him and say, God, I surrender it all. I surrender everything to you. You see, that's what I did years ago. I surrendered everything. Um, I was very involved in some of the traditional ways and I didn't know God the way I know him now. And I've come to learn and it was an encounter that I had alone with God. And he began to show me that that he loved me beyond what I did, that he loves me, that I don't have to do anything to prove to him who I am. And so when I was young, in, when I was about 28, um, I always say I had a V8 when I turned 28, and I was rolling a marijuana joint, really reaching out and trying to suppress the pain is really what I was doing. Um, and I was doing this in front of my mirror in my room. And when I was rolling this marijuana joint, I was looking in the mirror and I, I hated what I saw because I deep down I was convicted. I knew that I did not want to be a part of doing this. But for some reason, why am I doing this? And I'm rolling this marijuana joint and literally 
I could see again, I looked in the mirror again, and in my own eyes, I could see the compassion and the love of Jesus in my own eyes. I didn't understand it at the time, but then I heard the audible voice of God so clear. It's very rare, but I know that I heard his voice so clear. And he said, my daughter, my daughter, every time you hurt your body, you're hurting me. And I remember I just broke down and cried. And I said, God, I don't want to hurt anybody. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt myself anymore. And I just, I just need help. And I remember I cried out to him. And, and the sad thing about it at the point at that time is that I still rebelled. Because God makes it clear right from the beginning of the fall of man that man is sinful and we turn our own way. And I still rolled that marijuana joint thinking that it was just okay. But then I got really convicted and I realized that it was wrong. And I looked in the mirror and I'm literally begging God, please forgive me, please forgive me. I know this is wrong and I'm crying out to God for help. And after I even smoked it, I remember I cried out in repentance and I said, God, please forgive me. I know I just heard your voice. I know that you are speaking to me and I resisted you. Please forgive me. And if you could see angels in the natural, pull me down to my knees. And all of a sudden, God just said, your life can change if you take the first step. And I remember I cried out, and this is what I prayed for, precious ones. And I want you to pray the same thing. If you struggle, if any of you are out there struggling with addictions, I want you to pray this prayer. And that is, Lord, remove all, all the things that are, uh, how do I word it? Um, anything that is not, anything that is not of you, all the unhealthy um, areas of my life that is not of you, remove them out of my life right now. And everything that is pure and healthy that you want me to have, which is you, number one, but I invite that into my life. Remove everything that's not of you out of my life. And that's what I prayed because I knew smoking drugs and doing some of the topical things I was doing um, was not of God. And once I did that and I surrendered, the Holy Spirit came upon me a very special way. And um, I felt totally changed at that point. The enemy was still trying to draw, draw me back, though, to make me feel guilty, to make me feel shame, to make me feel like I wasn't free. And so I finally went to church and I walked into church and I felt completely like an oddball at, because I was like just entering into this new realm. And I walked into this church and the power of God really ministered to my heart. And I remember my former pastor, David Hazard, um, he's, he, just, he, he just ministered to my heart so dear. Um, but I remember he was doing a message on repentance and I ran to the altar, not understanding at all, just knowing my encounter in my room that day. And, um, and I just gave it all to him. And I said, Lord, I surrender everything to you. And when I surrendered everything to him, my mouth changed. The fact of desiring drugs changed. Even the desire to participate in any other thing, even the traditional ways that um, I was taught, um, I didn't desire those things anymore because I, I just wanted Jesus. He was all I wanted because he is the one who saved me. You see, precious ones, when you are free and you're saved of the one who paid a price for you so that you can live in freedom. You don't want anything else but Jesus. Sadly, many people have taken the name of Jesus and used it in vain and have not practiced the godliness of what the Bible says. And this is what's wounded a lot of people. I can relate. But I want to encourage you, as you get my book, you're going to grow, you're going to learn, and you are going to be so blessed. You're going to rise up to be great mentors in this time. You're going to not only hear the stories, but you're going to be part of the story. And you're going to learn how to write down your own purpose statement, your own, um, your own story, your own purpose of your destiny. You can write it down and declare what Psalms 138.8 says. 
that the Lord will fulfill his purpose and plan for you because his love endures forever. You see, when man came along with the iron fist and hurt our children, killed many of our kids, we have the chance now to make a difference. We have a chance now to be the families, the parents, the leaders, to make a difference now and to start planting seeds because God says that when we train up a child in the way that they should go, it'll go well with them. You see, precious ones, it's what man has done is one thing, but what God has done is so much more important. You see, when, when those people hurt and really harmed our children, God was watching. And I know some of you out there will say, well, why didn't he do anything? Why couldn't he stop it? I understand your pain. I felt the same thing when I was handcuffed at 11. And when they brought me into a receiving home, not understanding the separation of me and my mom, I understand well, to say that, why couldn't God do anything? I never did say that specifically because I knew God was with me somehow. As a little girl, I always talked to God, even though I really didn't fully understand it all. But I want to say that man used an iron fist. Man disappoints, but God reappoints. And he was watching all along over history what's taken place in Indigenous Canada. And God is saying, would you give me a chance? Would you give me a chance to, to know me, the love of what I did on the cross of Calvary? Would you come to know me, the God who paid that price for you. I didn't ask the Jesuits to do what they did. I didn't ask the Catholic Church to abuse and hurt my children. I didn't ask those who harmed good people. I didn't ask, God says. But see, man has free choice and free will. And the free will is that man will do what they will do. In Isaiah 53, God says men will turn their own way. But if you read later in 53, it says, by his stripes, you are healed. And so God is saying today in this hour, I believe as we merge into September 30th on our second Truth and Reconciliation, my prayer is that many of you would be focused on the one who loves you, which is Jesus Christ. Man did not grasp the understanding of really who God is. You see, it was all about religion rather than relationship. Because God is a relational God. He's not a controlling God to whip and to hurt and to, to punish. He's a God of love. And so I want to encourage you, precious ones, of what I did. I've been hurt by people. I've been hurt greatly by leaders. My whole entire life of even entering church was a challenge before I even got saved. But I want to encourage you this. When God gets a hold of you, and I don't mean on a negative, shameful way, when he wraps his mantle around you to minister to your heart, and as you read in my healing journal, I'm going to take you through four sections of four questions that I share um, that I learned. And I've learned from this from other groups as well. But I learned this from my wonderful friends from Family Foundations. And it shares this. What is the lie? Is it true? What is true? And how does the father see me? It's really important that you consider working on your own healing journal and work on your healing journey and understand that you are valuable, you are precious, you are loved. And what men and hurtful leaders have done, we've got to understand that they were wounded, they were hurt, they had issues, positional leadership issues, dictator leadership issues, and they need healing too. The amazing thing, is when you recognize what the lie is, you'll know because we have a God and we also have a devil that will try to pull you down. But whose voice do you need to hear? It's the voice of God. And the way you hear the voice of God is you come to know him. 
like I did. And knowing the master, knowing Jesus, my friend, my savior, my father, my everything, he will comfort you when all your friends betray you, when churches betray you, when communities might betray you. You can call on Jesus. All things are possible. And you will soar like an eagle through those storms. And so I want to encourage you to call upon him because he loves you so, so much. And so I just want to share a couple of scriptures with you. In Jeremiah 30, 17, it says, I will restore the health unto you and heal your wounds. I will heal, declares the Lord, because they are called an outcast. It is Zion whom no one cares. Some of you feel out there that no one cares for you. I can relate. But there is one and only the main one, which is Jesus, our Savior, who loves you more than anything. What man has done from history's past it is not what God did. You see, we have two choices. We can walk in love and walk in Christ, or we can walk in religion and deception. And sadly to say, there are many in those days, and even today, that walk in deception. And God is quickening many leaders, many pastors who have a discerning voice in this hour to help bring healing and restoration into families, because that's so important in this hour. And to break past the deception and just get real. We need to get real. And God wants you to know that you can come into a safe place with him and know him and just be real with God and say, God, I need you and I need to seek you. I need to know you and just be real. You can talk everything you want to God. You see, because years ago, the Catholic Church made it seem like you couldn't even read your own Bible. But the key is, is God wants to restore healing. And guess what? He's going to restore the church too. See, God loves the church because he said the gates um, that he says to Peter, he says, I will build my church and the gates will not prevail against it. So I just want to say that as a woman who loves my indigenous people, but as also an ordained minister, I love the church and I love God. But I know this, or let me rephrase the word, but I know this that God is going to bring restoration to the church. And that is my heart. And that is my call. And I'm praying about the next level of what God wants to do. But he wants to bring reconciliation in the body of Christ too. And I hope that he uses me and that he uses you in that area. I also want to share in Isaiah 61, 7, it says this, instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Hear that? double portion instead of dishonor they shall rejoice in their lot communities in the north it's time to rejoice in your lot therefore in their land they shall possess a double portion and they shall have everlasting joy i declare and decree that Indigenous Canada and the church rises up to a double portion and that those out there who have much will share with those who have little because that's what Acts 4 talks about, Acts 4 and 5. When they all came together with their many things and their many gifts, of course, they laid it at the apostles' feet and they distributed it. But the amazing thing about that is is that they shared everything they have. And one thing I want to commend Indigenous Canada for many of you, that I've been to your reserves. And being Indigenous, also a minister, you have welcomed me many, many times as I've come into your communities and you fed me. I had to like come home and fast after, but you have blessed me with your hospitality. Even when you go to Cuba, same thing. They're just so hospitable. And because you are in your faraway land, 
know that you are there for such a time as this, that God has appointed you for a very significant reason. And it's terrible of what's happened in history's past, but your past does not determine your future. And God wants you to know this from Job 42, 10, he says, and the Lord restored the fortunes of Job. And when he had prayed for his friends, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. God's calling you and me to continue to pray for those who've hurt us, those who've caused harm, and to declare and to step out in faith like never before and declare that he will perform miracles and display his power among his people. I just bless and I encourage and I speak life into every indigenous First Nations, Aboriginal, you know, they changed the name. They spent $2 million to change the name. Personally, we are who we are, but I speak blessing over every one of you. And I declare favor over every one of you and you will rise. I wrote a song called Soar Like an Eagle. You will rise and soar like eagles in this time and this hour. And so as we reflect in a moment of silence right now for September 30th on all those children who lost the opportunity to soar in their abundance, to soar in their victory. I really want to encourage every one of you out there to really, really open your eyes and seek the Father and to understand that we can't make the same mistake again. See, I shared this when I was invited into a community and I remember I had the children actually pray for the adults and I taught them how to pray because the key is, is that systems, autonomy has come in to say, we can do this better and have tried to manipulate many indigenous people of this is how we're supposed to do things. To the point where our indigenous people have been like, many have felt teachable, but yet very insecure of not knowing what to do. Just being submissive because they're desperate for help. They're desperate for healing and, and support, right? That's why we're, many rely on government. But I'm calling a transition and a turnaround. And our people have been so dependent on man and less dependent on God. And I want to encourage you today that this is your time and hour. This is so important that you get this precious ones because God has a plan not to please man not to be swayed and swept into the ways of man, but to come and seek the master, Jesus. Many have turned away from their faith in Christ because of what man has molded in the minds of precious lives. But I wanna encourage you. When I got saved, I wasn't molded. I wasn't even mentored actually originally at the beginning. It was totally a God encounter for me. And I heard God speak to me and he began to teach me how to hear his voice prophetically. And then I became mentored over time. And then I went to Bible college and then I started to grow and learn more about how to know God and his word and to live the life with Jesus. And it's really important that we do not leave him out because we need him more than anything in this hour in this nation. So First Nations Canada, I honor you. I bless you. I love you so much. And I am so honored that God has allowed me to serve many of you in the North with our Christmas project, our Simmons Up Christmas, and more so to travel and speak. And I wanna encourage you as a family coach, as a parent coach, as well as I do a lot of training on leadership, I am here for you. 
and our ministry is here for you. And if you need encouragement, you need coaching, I just want you to know you're not alone. I do not want you to suffer in silence. And I do not want you just to let things sweep by. And that's what I just wanted to say in that conference I was speaking at is because the government has done all they've done, we've just been passive and said, okay, well, just let them do whatever they want. Okay, well, they seem to know better. They seem to know they can do it better than we can. And we just let them go. And we're letting our children slip through our fingers and we can't do it anymore. We have to be watchful, attentive, have like reins like a horse and really be discerning with radar for our children in this hour. And, and you know, I know what it's like because I was living in a home with an alcoholic mom who was not aware of what was going on. But I wanna encourage you, it's time for change. And if God can heal me, he can heal you too. And, and never mind if God can, if God, God healed me, he's going to heal you too. So I just want to pray with you right now. Father, I just thank you right now. Who's watching this clip, I pray a blessing over them. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would move in a mighty way in their life. I pray that they would recognize, Lord, that every child, every family, every individual, every leader, every pastor, every chief, they matter to God. Every church and we thank you, Father, for the seeds that have been sown. And we praise you, Father God, that, God, you've given us a contrite heart. You said in your word, Lord, that, Father, remove, oh, shut that up. See, in Isaiah 57, 14, God says very clearly, he says, prepare the road, prepare the road, and remove the obstacles away from my people. And then he says, I will bless the contrite, those who are lowly in spirit. I will revive the contrite. Yes, he will, precious ones. He is going to revive the contrite, the ones who've been broken, Father, the ones who felt like they can't paint a beautiful picture because of what they've experienced in the past. But God, this is your time to bring healing in families and healing in communities and healing in the church in this hour that, God, we are not about competition, but we are about completion. We're about coming into a place of unity and building Building up, as you said, being an encourager of godly positive influence brings a smile on your face, Master, and brings healing to the human heart. Lead us, oh God, to do great exploits in this hour. Yes, we honor and we value government. We are thankful for them in a position. But I will say, in addition to that, that it's time that the nation of Canada and it's time that indigenous precious people recognize who they are and the call of God that is on our life and the call of God in individuals to see his people saved, healed and set free. This is not about drawing people into deception, but God is, says that not only will he build this church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, but he says, call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can see what God's prepared for those who love him. We've got to come to know you, Lord. We've got to come to love you and know your love. And so I want to invite whoever is watching this right now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I ask you right now that you would hear what I had to say, my testimony and what I'm sharing with you today, and that you would sincerely say, Jesus, I need you. I saw what man has done with the iron fist and what's happened and that's hurt me and, you know, tried to pull me down and maybe almost took my life. But God, I need you more than anything. I am valuable. I am precious. I am loved. I am a winner in you, God. Teach me to know you greatly. And if you don't know God right now, like really know him, some of you might have been out there and you've given your heart to Jesus, but you really don't know him in that intimate knowing of him that he wants you. 
He wants to take you to a place where you can just seek his face, to listen, to be attentive everywhere you go. You don't always have to religiously get on your knees and pray for five minutes and read the Bible for five minutes and be so systematic like that. Have a routine, but just be free. Talk to him, have conversations. You know, I heard Jesse Duplantis say this, I don't pray because I have conversations with God all the time. And that's pretty much my life. I pray all the time. I'm always in conversation with God. And so I want to encourage you, have conversations with God. And, and let's have that conversation now. And would you say, Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer after me and just say, Lord Jesus, I know that man has hurt me. I know that I have felt like maybe a broken crayon thinking I can't paint a beautiful picture. But Jesus, you paid the picture. You paid the price for my sin. And when I didn't see it, I mocked you, Jesus. I came against you and resisted you. But I invite you into my life right now to be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you, God, for the salvation and what you're about to do in my life. And today, I invite Jesus, you as my Lord and Savior, into my life to be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If that's you, precious one, if you have said that prayer, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your story. And I do encourage you, if you're able, go on Amazon and get my book, Healing from Pain to Purpose. This is the actual Healing from Pain to Purpose healing journal. It is an action plan that's going to help you soar and to be all God's called you to be. So get the book and the workbook together and be blessed. And I just want to encourage you because God has an amazing plan for your life. And, you know, some communities out there, you may not have a church to go to, but I want to encourage you get online, connect with some godly churches that can help you. I'm here for you to coach you, to mentor you if you need help. I know of other churches around, depending where you're at, um, I could refer churches to you, you know, uh, depending where you're at, if you're in Winnipeg, if you're in Saskatchewan, wherever, I like to connect with different churches so that I can refer. And um, I just want to encourage you that you are valuable, you are loved. And remember this, it's not just about what we do, the things that we have, because really, all those things will tarnish one day. They will. Even my book. I mean, the book material, if you know, one day. These are all materials that can help people, but everything we have will tarnish, including money. But God, he will never, ever fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when everything else fails, God will never fail, and he will not fail you. Would you give him a chance to take you to the next step? And I'm here to help coach you. And I want to see you heal. I want to see you rise. I want to see you soar in your healing journey. And I want you to know that you are valuable, you are precious, and you are loved. If you want to connect with me further, I want you to know that you can reach me at faitharise.com. You can also uh, go on to my healing for you as healing the number four you.org and that's where you can find further information you can hear my music you can find my information on coaching and uh, i still have to update some of my website but i just want you to know that i'm here for you you are not alone and i am so excited and um, if you're in the winnipeg area if you're a young person family member i want to also encourage you um, that I'll be going to Winnipeg. I'm so honored to go and to support um, the wonderful church there and uh, Lot Thunder's uh, family. And I'm just so honored to be a part of that opportunity. And so if you're in the Winnipeg area, I do encourage you come to this awesome, awesome meeting. And please bring your whole family. It's not just for young people. Bring your family as well, because it's it's really coming together and learning together as a whole. So I love you guys so, so much. Thank you, miigwech, and you are a winner. Miigwech to you. Take care. Bye.